Let's learn about patterns of zero. In this video, you'll multiply by tens, one hundreds, and one thousands. Use the zeros to get your answer without long multiplication. Now let's try multiplying by numbers bigger than 10. Here we're starting with 231. Go ahead and write that in your chart. Excellent! Now we're going to multiply by a number bigger than 10. How many zeros does 100 have? Two, exactly. Go ahead and fill in your chart starting with the two zeros, one in the ones and one in the tens. Now, have a look at how far over you think you will have to move your numbers. Exactly. You're going to have to move over two place values. That means that the one is going to go from the ones to the hundreds, the three is going to go from the tens to the thousands, and the two is going to go from the hundreds to the ten thousands, giving you the answer of 23,100. Now let's look at our next equation. You'll see that the first two problems have been done for us. Take a look at the first row, 174. In the next row, we'll be multiplying 174 times 100. How many zeros are in 100? Two, excellent. Notice how the two zeros are in the ones and the tens. How many columns does the four have to move over? Two, the four moves over two place values, as does the seven and the one, to get your answer of 17,400. In the next row, we are multiplying 174 by 1,000. How many zeros does 1,000 have? Three. And how many zeros does your answer have? Three. Notice how the zeros are in the ones, tens, and hundreds, and your numbers have moved over in the place values. Notice how we are multiplying 174 times 1,000, not 17,400 times 1,000. Let's move on to the next part. We are starting with the number 3,298. Our first problem asks us to do 3,298 times 100. How many zeros does 100 have? Two. Excellent. Put them in the ones and the tens column. Now we're going to have to shift the numbers over two places. The eight moves from the ones to the hundreds. The nine moves from the tens to the thousands. The two moves from the hundreds to the ten thousands. And the three moves from the thousands to the hundred thousands. Your last problem asks you to multiply 3,298 times 1,000. How many zeros are in 1,000? Three, exactly. Put them in the ones, tens, and hundreds column. Now, remember, you are multiplying your original number of 3,298. That's what needs to go in front of these three zeros, forming your final answer of 3,298,000. Now let's look at the patterns of zeros method with numbers other than 10 and multiples of 10. Here, our chart is asking us to multiply by six or by 60. Now, 60 is six times 10, which means that 60 has that zero that involves the pattern of zeros rule. The first row is done for us. 42 times six is 252. 42 times 60 is 2,520, which you'll notice is similar to 252 in that it just has one additional zero at the end from the 60, which moves everything one place value to the left. Let's begin on row two together. 65 times six. Pause the video and do your long multiplication. Excellent. You've arrived at 390 as well. Now, let's do times 60. But wait, do you need to do long multiplication for this? Absolutely not. If you've noticed the pattern correctly, you know that all we need to do is add one zero, since we've already multiplied by six in the previous equation. 
Go ahead and add a zero to your solution, making your new answer 3,900. Let's do the last one together. 861 times 6. Go ahead and pause and do that long multiplication on your own. As soon as you have 5,166, we're ready to move on. Now, moving on with our pattern of zeros, we know that we don't have to do our long multiplication to multiply by 60. Instead, we just add a zero and move the place values to the left, making our new answer 51,660.